You have something new to save in Notion, let's say an online tool that may help your business, but you don't know exactly where to put it. Since it is related to your business, you decide to copy the URL and go to your company's Notion page and just paste it there because that's where future you may find it, right? Then one day, if you are lucky, you will remember that you saved something, so you will just use the search function. <laughs> but it was an URL, so there is no way that you can actually find it with <laughs> normal English because you don't remember the name of the tool. So you stop using the search function, so you go everywhere in your Notion workspace trying to find it, but you don't remember, so you just accept it. It is lost in the void of your Notion system, again. Well, in all honesty, I have lived my corporate life like this for many, many years. In fact, I cannot count the number of things that I have lost or forgot. Because managing our digital life is quite hard because we cannot feel it, we cannot touch it. So we will just close the computer and everything will be in order, right? No, <laughs> this is not how it works. So after losing a lot of things and getting frustrated <laughs> with myself, I decided to change my mindset. And this new mindset has really, really reduced the number of times that this losing thinkies happened because you know that in this channel we don't strive for perfection we strive to be a little bit better every day so this is what we are going to do in this video try to reduce the amount of times that we lose stuff and all its consequences we have already spoken in another video about the three times rule that whenever we find a problem more than three times then it means that it's worth fixing and I can tell that more than three times I have lost something in my digital ecosystem. So it was time for me to fix it. So let's think about this problem together. Every piece of data that we have in our Notion workspace starts always from the same place, from the moment that we input it into our system. And that single decision is going to make all the difference among us finding what we just saved or us forgetting and its consequences. So the mindset that has helped me a lot is to be always on the look to have input points for the different things that I'm going to be inputting into my system. And that entry point should be unique. This is also important because this way we are going to remove all doubt whenever we want to input something into our system because we will not have to choose how to input it. We will even not have to remember how to do it because we just have one and only way. So if we come across some piece of information, let's say the online tool of before, and we haven't found a unique way yet to input it into our system, let's ask ourselves if this is a category of information that we are gonna keep saving in the future. If the answer is yes, we gotta stop and create that because we are going to be saving future Danny, I hope your name is Danny, a ton of time and mental stress. Okay, at the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing with you one exercise that you can start implementing after watching the video, because still the algorithm likes that you watch till the end of the video, and this is going to help me bring this video to even more people. But before that, let me share with you some examples of the entry points that I have already built into my system, so you can have a general idea of what we can build. So the first input source is going to be for things that I capture from the internet. So here we can see an example of an online tool uh, this chili pepper is to create forms within Notion. So here I, I will be using the save to Notion extension that I have already mentioned in some of the videos. And here I already have this form created for internet tools. So I will just have to click here and write here a short description of the form itself. So, and that will be it. I will just add a new page and this already created in my Notion. And this is the only way that I'm going to use for inputting information about internet tools. And I use the same input method also for blog articles. This is a, a blog by a very successful YouTuber. So if I want to save this blog article, again, I will just go to save to Notion. And I have this form over here of internet articles. The status is already set to read. The source is article, and this is the name of the, of the page. Everything is automatic. So I will just have to add a new page, and that is it. We have the article over here. And the last one that I use is for books, because normally I store all my books in the database because someone has recommended it. So what I will do is go to Amazon, read the reviews, and if it seems quite interesting, I will save it to my database. So whenever I'm in a buying books mode, I will just go there and check which books are interesting. So in the same way, I have a form for this here in books. I will find here the topic and the status if I want to buy it promptly. So it's going to be to buy a new page and that is it. Okay. Now what about fleeting ideas? 
those are ideas that maybe are related to our business or to our personal life, like some idea, some inspiration. Whenever we are walking on the streets, we may have an idea and we want to save it. So how am I handling this? Well, I have also created a single entry point and now since the API is out, I have stolen this feature from Evernote because Evernote has an amazing quick capture method that I can use on the phone because mainly whenever I have this kind of ideas, I'm on the phone. So I have created this workflow mainly thinking of using it in my phone. And you may think, how are you connecting Evernote to Notion? How are, how are they related, Daniel? Like, are you getting crazy? Okay, first, let me show you real quick what is the backend of this. By the way, if you haven't set up your Notion in order to use the API, you can watch this video over here in which I explain everything and even I give many ideas on how you can use the API. But let me show you this one about Evernote. Okay, so this created in Zapier, and by the way, you can do this automation for free because in the free plan, you can create this one-step automation. And this is basically saying that whenever there is a new node in Evernote, I'm gonna create a database with information of that node. I'm not gonna enter in the technicality of this because for this, you have the video that I just linked before, but I just want you to get the idea and that this is the only way that I'm going to be storing my ideas into Notion. So this create database item in Notion is connected to my inbox database. And why am I doing this? Because this is the database that I'm going to be reviewing every week in my weekly review. And why am I doing this? Because I'm a very forgetful person and I may save an idea and tomorrow I don't even remember about it. But if I have a small task within my weekly review workflow that shows me everything that is in my inbox database, then I will have the time to process that information and move it wherever I need. So this is my weekly review. And if we go a little bit down of the process, we will see that here one of the steps is to watch my inbox database. As you see, I have been saving this week some things that I may have to clean up. So, and the way that I am doing this is by going to my phone and here I have the widget for Evernote. So now everything that I type over here is going to be transferred into my Notion. So as you can see, it's so much faster than using any other thing. And again, it's free. Now the next category is going to be tasks and YouTube video ideas. And the process is exactly the same, but I'm just using different databases. So what I have done is I have created one entry point for each of them. This is the add new task database. And this is the only way that I use for inputting my tasks. So this way I am forcing myself to always fill all this metadata. And what is cool about this is that I'm always forced to link every of my tasks to at least one outcome that I'm pursuing. So therefore every task that enters into my system have a purpose. And if I cannot find any outcome that I want to achieve for the task, probably it means that the task shouldn't be here in the first place. And I'm using the same method for my YouTube channel. You see here the add video idea. Again, this is the only entry point of video ideas into my system. And if you're wondering how I'm keeping empty these linked databases, normally when I'm inputting data, I start from left to right. So I'm taking this last field, which is gonna be the last one that I'm going to fill, and I'm using it for the filter. So I'm just showing everything where the type is empty. So this means that whenever I fill the type, the entry is going to disappear. So this is always going to be empty. The next type of information that I input into my system is the highlights of the book that I'm reading. Currently I'm using Kindle and there is a fantastic application to automate bringing all of our highlights from our Kindle books into Notion or even with Rome or Evernote. So this is Readwise and here we will just select to import the highlights from our Kindle account. As you see, here is connected and then we will select where to export it. Here I have Notion and Rome. And once this is set up, it's going to be automated. All the highlights from your Kindle will be passed through the app of your choice. In the description, you will be able to find a link to a readway just in case you want to use it. And the last piece of information that I normally save into Notion, although not that often, is documents. Before I was using Evernote for this. In fact, I was mostly using Evernote for that. But now what I have done is I have just built one database that is solely to store documents. And for this, I haven't built anything very fancy. I have just built a database and I know that this is the documents database. That is it. So whenever I have a document that I want to save, such as my tax return, some payments for my Indonesian visa, something like that, 
I know that this is the only place where they're gonna be. So these are the main ways that I have to input information into my system. And as you can see, I just have one way per type of information. But let me give you an extra tip because sometimes just standardizing the input method is not enough and we need a little bit of help. For example, for this documents database, it's quite easy because it's just storing and that is it. We don't need to do anything else. But for example, for tasks, just by standardizing the way that we input them into our system is not enough. So the extra tip that I have hinted a little bit before is to include in our weekly reviews that I highly encourage everyone to do and to follow religiously is to include a task that prompt us to take care of certain parts of our system. The same way as I did with the inbox database before, you can apply it to whatever use case you have. And we can see this weekly review as the housekeeping within our system. And now that you have made it to the end of the video, Video. by the way congratulations and thank you so much because again this helps the algorithm I'm going to share with you a 20 minutes exercise that you can do right after watching this video that is going to help you immensely to never ever lose information I say never ever but that is not true you will still lose information but at least you will lose much less so during the first 10 minutes of this exercise I want you to just go to Notion open a new page and start writing bullet points. And what I want you to write in those bullet points is the different categories of information that normally you input in your system. Things like tasks, fleeting ideas, tweets, blog posts, like whatever. Just brain dump, even if they are duplicate, even if they are barely the same, doesn't matter, just brain dump everything. Think about how you use Notion and the things that you normally input into the system and write them all down. And then think which one of those you input in your system repeatedly, because those are the ones that are worth creating an input source. And you can mark those with a color, with a checkbox, like whatever you prefer. But with something so they stand out, because those are the ones that you are going to be focusing on for the next 10 minutes. Because these next 10 minutes are going to be used for creating those input sources. So you can create this, add a new task page, you can download Save to Notion and create any of those forms. You can go to the nerdy side and maybe use Evernote for your thoughts and automate them into Notion using Zapier. <laughs> And one thing to be aware is also think in which environment you are normally going to be inputting that data into Notion. Is it mobile or is it desktop? Because according to that, your input method may vary. For example, for my free notes, as I know that most of the time this happens when I'm in, the, in my cell phone, I just optimized for cell phone. So you can follow the same mindset for yours. And after these 20 minutes, I am sure that future you is going to thank you a lot because you're gonna save time, you're gonna save headaches, and you're probably stop losing some information. So now please share in the comments below one thing that you have decided to create an input system for so we can all learn from each other. Well, that is it for this video guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.